Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Chapter 5 uh, discussion webinar for Statistic Solutions. Um, everybody will receive a copy of this, and I believe we also now um, put them on YouTube um, so anybody can access them. Okay, a couple things before we get started. Um, we do have a support person on with us um, who can answer any non-content related questions. Um, also, if uh, you have questions as we uh, go through the presentation, um, you're welcome to type them into the, the chat box or the uh, question and answer box um, if they're content related, but I won't get to them until the end. Okay, so let's get started. So if you've made it to the chapter five, congratulations. Um, that's quite a feat and um, you're on the, the downhill slope. Uh, there's still work to do, don't be fooled, but um, it's, um, it goes a easier than the, the proposal typically. Um, if you're not on the chapter five yet and you're just kind of tuning in to see what to expect, um, that's, uh, that's wise and helpful too. Okay, uh, this is what we'll be talking about today. These, these contents are fairly typical of what goes into a chapter five uh, discussion. Um, schools will sometimes have uh, spe specific um, requirements. So you should get your, if you don't already have it uh, for the rest of the dissertation, you know, get your school's template, follow your school's template, see what the school says uh, about, you know, the sections they want, uh, the order they want them in, because sometimes there are differences. Um, but the, um, but generally the content is the same. Um, again, sometimes sections will be a little different, but so follow your schools, um, your template, if they have one, if not, um, see if your chair can give you an example that they want you to follow, um, which is just helpful for, you know, the headers they want, the sections they want within the chapter, but also to show you what people have done to, um, for content for these sections. Uh, you know, you can, you can use your resources, go to webinars, um, you know, talk to people, do research about what goes into these chapters, but always having a good example or two at, at hand when you go to write it uh, is, is really helpful. Okay, so typical sections, what we're going to cover today. All right, uh, so the introduction, um, just like in the introduction of any other chapter, uh, you just want to reorient your reader. Right. So you want to um, reorient them. Uh, pretty simple steps here. Restate the purpose of your study. That's always a good idea. Um, remind the reader of the importance of your study and the need for your study. In other words, the research problem. Uh, remind them of what's what's driving the study, um, why the study is necessary to conduct. Um, and you can end the introduction section by previewing the contents of the chapter if you'd like. Um, again, general stuff, see if there's anything, if your school's template, if there's any particulars that they want more in the introduction, uh, obviously include that. All right, <clears throat> then the next section is usually called something like interpretation of the findings or discussion of the findings. Um, and this is really the heart of the discussion chapter. Um, this is where you, you interpret your findings, you discuss your findings, and really how you do that. Um, I see people hit this section and they, they're really kind of unclear about um, what's required. So they end up, they don't, they're not sure what to do. So they, they end up kind of copying paste, uh, copying and pasting sections from chapter four and putting it here. Uh, don't do that. Um, so this section is really about um, laying out your findings and really talking about your findings in relation to some of the major findings from previous studies from chapter two. Um, and, and what your professors are really looking for is do your findings support previous research? Do they not support previous research? Do they partially support? How do they fit in? 
with um, major previous findings. Uh, and the easiest way to kind of section this section out or, you know, with subsections is by research question. Uh, if it's quantitative, um, you know, just research question one, research question two, or if it's qualitative, you can, you can uh, subsection it out by themes, you know, theme one, theme two. Um, and that makes it easy for readers, right? It's reader friendly. Um, it also makes it easier for, for you as a writer, because if you start talking about all your findings, you know, in one kind of lump, um, it's going to get confusing. Um, so it's, it's best and easiest to take it by research question or by, or by theme. Okay. <clears throat> so recent data or summarize what you found, and this can be in pretty plain terms, plain spoken terms. Um, the chapter five is, is more plain spoken spoken than the results. Um, the results may be statistics heavy if, you, if you're quantitative. Um, so you don't really need all the statistics in chapter five, just kind of the, you know, the, the, um, the findings put plainly. Okay. Um, and then once you, you, you restate your uh, research question, your finding or your theme, um, this is where you bring in, you know, uh, some of the major findings from, from chapter two, from previous research. Um, I found this, and this supports or does not support the findings of previous literature. And you would talk a little, you would bring that in, talk a little bit about that. Sometimes if findings are like already mixed or inconclusive, you know, your, your findings are going to add to one side or the other, or the other right? So um, sometimes findings can still be mixed and inconclusive. You're especially if your findings don't support previous findings. We'll get that to that in a minute. Um, yeah, so they want you to, to, to note uh, specifically whether your findings support or don't support, um, start a, a discussion based on that. If your findings support previous research, you can usually, it's pretty safe to make conclusions based on that. Um, if your findings don't support previous research, um, then that suggests some inconclusiveness, uh, which may suggest that more research is needed um, because obviously, you know, the findings are mixed. If, if you're finding, if your findings say something different than previous research, um, findings then are still mixed. Okay. Um, if you found something new, um, you would definitely want to note that and discuss that. Um, you know, maybe you found something that, it, you know, your population was different or it's just, or it's qualitative and you found a, a new theme. Um, that's definitely worth noting. Um, and usually when your findings don't support previous research, um, your professor is usually want an explanation. It doesn't have to be long, but you should try to explain why you think your findings were different. Okay, and what we just said at the end here, you can make conclusions based on your findings and discussions at, you know, at the end of each discussion uh, for, for each research question or each theme. Again, if, if, you're, if your findings confirm previous research, you can make conclusions based on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me back up here a couple more things. Um, if you did a mixed method study, I mean, it's really basically the same thing, but you might have to have um, kind of two subsec, two bigger subsections within this discussion section. Uh, one where you discuss the quantitative findings and one where you discuss the qualitative findings. And usually for mixed methods, the qualitative portion is commenting somehow on the, quant the quantitative portion. Um, so, you know, I think it's a good idea to handle each section separately and then somewhere kind of try to tie the, um, as you're talking about the qualitative uh, results, try to tie those into the quantitative results, noting whether they kind of elaborate or shed extra light on, on what the quantitative data reveals. Um, also, the theoretical framework. Um, and question is kind of open. Um, sometimes you can kind of um, 
mix in your theory uh, in, in these discussions of the, of the findings with the previous research. Um, you know, if it's easy and it makes sense to kind of mix in your theory in the discussions, you can go ahead and do that. Um, sometimes it's easier just to kind of have a subsection called links to theory, and you can kind of discuss your theory uh, in relation to your findings uh, separately. Um, sometimes I've seen chairs not care um, as long as you, you know, you bring in uh, past research and talk about your, your findings in relation to past research. Sometimes they don't even bring up the theory. So, uh, you know, that's kind of an open question. If, it, if I would say if it, if your template calls for you to discuss the theory, then you, you want to bring it in. Um, if it doesn't, um, you know, you might not need to and see what your chair says. Also, you know, you can try it without if, if there's nothing that really calls for you to discuss the theory, you can leave it out. And if your chair wants uh, you to discuss the theory, um, you can add it. Okay, um, next section is limitations. And it's just like it sounds. I mean, if there's any shortcomings or weaknesses that may have affected your study, um, you wanna note them here and discuss them here. Um, and if you remember, if you go back to probably in such, uh, chapter one and maybe in chapter three, you just, in the proposal, you discussed um, potential limitations. In other words, at that point, you didn't know exactly what would be a limitation or what might be a limitation. So you kind of forecasted, um, you know, certain things may present limitations. Uh, you can go back to those sections to see if what you actually talked about actually ended up um, being shortcomings or weaknesses after you conducted your study. Uh, so that's a place to start. Um, you know, for for quantitative studies, uh, you know, major weakness or is that um, you didn't get enough participants and your power your study was underpowered. Um, so that would be um, a major limitation for quantitative study. Sometimes you can't get the population, the sample that, that you wanted. So you have to kind of you have to use a proxy or a different different sample. Um, you would need to mention that. In other words, it's it's not really difficulties, but it's something that may have actually affected your results. Um, for qualitative studies, you know, researcher bias is, is always kind of a potential limitation. Uh, if you want to mention that in any steps you took to mitigate that bias, that would be appropriate. Um, usually in this section, they want you to talk about um, the generalizability of your results to the larger target population. Um, and usually if you say you have a quantitative study um, and you had an adequate sample size. Um, usually your, your findings should generalize pretty well. Um, if, you're, if your study was underpowered uh, or there were other problems, it, it, they might not. Uh, for qualitative research, um, your findings will not generalize well. Um, and that's because qualitative research by design um, has a low sample size. I mean, if you're doing interviews with people, you might have interviewed eight people, 10 people, that's a low sample size. So it's not representative um, of, the, of the target population, but at the same time, qualitative studies are not meant to be to do that. Um, they're meant to get in-depth information that you can't get with quantitative studies. So, um, but it's worth mentioning. And uh, in the limitation section, if you if you conducted a qualitative study, um, just something like that, that that um, because of the low sample size, findings um, won't generalize well to the target population. But they're but for this type of research, they're not meant to. Um, they're meant to provide rich uh, kind of in depth uh, data. All right, implications for practice, um, and it's just like it sounds. So. One kind of mistake people make in the implications for practice and also the next section recommendations for further research is they give general implications for practice. Okay, so but the, so this isn't a general um, implication. Uh, 
place to talk about general uh, implications for practice. It, they're specifically based on what you found. Okay, so in other words, uh, discuss how your findings inform practice and you can be specific. Um, you know, nuts and bolts, like, you know, sometimes it, it might mean that um, for whatever you found, you might need like professional development seminars or, um, you know, training seminars or, you know, group meetings or mentoring or, um, or if it's, uh, you know, administration and education, you know, what does it mean for administrators? Um, so you can get specific here. But again, it should uh, be informed by what you found. And um, let's see, yeah, what, what, what do your findings mean for professionals in your field? And a way to think about this too is, um, you know, somebody asks you, oh, hey, you conducted the study. Um, what did it tell you? What does it mean for, you know, us here in the office or, you know, what people do um, in those areas? You know, what would you tell them? Okay, so how do, so how does it affect people who actually are doing the jobs uh, or in the roles uh, of what you studied? Uh, recommendations for further research. Again, it should be based on what you found. It can also be based on limitations. So uh, again, um, based on what you found, your focus on. Obviously, in any, any findings that are new or novel, um, you can recommend um, further examination and exploration on, on those new findings. Um, findings that don't support pre previous research uh, warrant further investigation, because if, you're, if your findings don't match or don't confirm previous research, um, it means that, that findings are still inconclusive on the topic. So inconclusiveness um, warrants for the research. Uh, so if your, your findings don't support, um, you can just kind of generally recommend for the research in the area. Um, sometimes limit, uh, recommendations can be based on limitations. Let's, so let's say you... Um, your study was underpowered. It was quantitative and you didn't get enough um, participants uh, for it to be adequately powered. You can just recommend that you replicate the study, uh, that the researchers replicate the study and address that limitation um, or whatever your limitation is. You can recommend that it be replicated and that future uh, researchers um, address your limitations. Okay, um, you could also recommend different types of studies and designs to get different kinds of information. So if you did a quantitative study uh, and you found a relationship between two factors, um, you might recommend um, to understand the nature of that relationship better qualitative research to, um, to kind of explore uh, the nature of, of that relationship. Um, if you found something new, you can also recommend qualitative research to ex explore whatever it is new that you found. Um, sometimes you can recommend case studies. And case studies uh, involve multiple data sources. So it gives you a more comprehensive understanding of whatever it is you're studying. So this is something else you can include in the recommendations for further research um, is different types of study on your topic to get um, different types of information. Okay, and here we are at the end. Um, check your school's template. Again, um, some schools you can stop at the recommendations for uh, further research. Uh, some schools want a summary. So again, just see what your school prefers. Um, if it's a summary, you know, it's it's like other summaries, but it it also is the end of your dissertation. So there's an added component to it. So obviously like any summary, recap the major points from the chapter. Um, and then because it is the end of your dissertation, um, leave the reader with a take home message. So this would be, you know, the most important points or aspects of your study you want them to remember. Uh, and you can really drive the point home here. I mean, you can kind of, you know, hype it up a little bit, the, the importance and what it tells us. Um, 
And when you're doing a summary, like recapping the major points, um, watch out for what I call fake summaries, um, which where people just just say, well, in this chapter, I did this, I did this, and I did this. Um, that's kind of like a list of, of what you did or a list of the, um, the subsections. Um, you know, just recap the major points, uh, which is a little, bit, a little more meaty um, and uh, a little more elaboration than what I what I just talked about. Okay, and here is our information, uh, contact information. If you feel like you want to talk to somebody, um, obviously at no cost, to just to see what we offer and see if it's um, right for you. Also, we, we offer these um, webinars on different chapters, different aspects of the dissertation. So just um, check our calendar uh, to see when we're offering what. And does anybody have any questions? If you do, just you can type them in the, um, if you do just type your questions in the chat box or the question and answer box. Uh, John, um, you, can you just uh, can you type your question in the in the, the box there? And uh, Dr. Banda, same. No questions today. Okay. Okay. No no questions from anybody. All right, well then I will let everybody go and thank you for attending. Good luck on your uh, dissertation, your chapter five. Um, let us know if you, um, you know, if you're interested in assistance and uh, we'll get you set up. Ah, okay, here, I have a question here. What about managerial implications? Um, yeah, managerial implications, it's a specific kind. So that would be if you're doing a leadership or, a, you know, a management study, sometimes it has implications for management. Um, the same, same idea as the implications for practice. Um, so the practice would just be specifically management. Um, so if you did a management study, what implications or what do your findings mean for managers? Um, same, same kind of idea. Will you have a replay, please? Um, the, um, the presentation is available on YouTube. I think at the beginning there, um, our support person uh, gave you the address for where to find it. Hello there. What are the first slides? I found you on interpretation. Uh, well, I'm not going to go back to um, the other slides. I mean, I'll go back to the slides. I'm not going to give the, um, the presentation again on those. But this is on um, YouTube. And go uh, back up in the chat box, and there will be a link there for it. And you can, you can go back to the, the slides um, that you have questions on. Right, okay. Okay, any, any other questions about content? All right, great. Well, thank you for attending. Great, all right, thank you. All right, thank you everybody. Okay, and good luck. Take care. <laughs>